Hey everyone, I'm Eric. This is my wife, Julie. This is about to be a weird one. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on tight. We're talking about letting go of a fence in your blended family. And we're not talking about a wooden chain link fence. We're talking about a fence. A fence. Good luck. Okay, where are we going to start this one from? <laughs> we're Well, we're talking about offense and being offended. I'm already offended. Are you? I'm already offended. <laughs> well, I thought we'd start with why is it important to let go of offense in your blended family? Like, I wanted to start off with the why. Why should we? Why is this important? Why are we even having a whole episode dedicated to this topic? Um, and so for me, I know that anytime your like a fence comes up that's where like roots of bitterness and resentments grow and what we know about bitterness and resentment when they grow up it comes in between people and so if you can't let go of a fence then it is going to divide and you're never going to have a unified family or a unified marriage or if you really want good relationships with your co-parents or the kids, you have to have a practice around letting offense go. And it's really, really actually one of the hardest things um, I think that people can do or embark. Like, I think it's a really hard thing to do, but I think it, the why is because you want successful relationships. Even your co-parenting relationships, they may suck. You may not love your co-parent, but you need that relationship intact and you need respect and you need it to be successful for the good of the kids. And it has nothing to do about liking anyone, but it is. You need to have a successful co-parenting relationship, never mind marriage and family relationships. So anything to add to that or what do you... Well, it ends up becoming um, toxic, you know, it ends up seeping in the cracks and tearing things apart. You know, it's uh, it's something that if bitterness holds on, you know, it just it it just breeds more evil. You yeah. Know? And, and, and not like evil in the sense of like everything around you is bad, but it just it brings you down. Yeah. Well, and you just said it like I think being offended is a stuck state. In life coaching, we talk a lot about being stuck and being in a stuck state. And when you're offended and you kind of get stuck there and you can't really grow, you can't mature, you can't move on, you can't, I mean, if you're unwilling to do anything with the offense that you're carrying around, you're kind of, you're, you're kind of stunting your own growth. You're not going to have a, a family life that matures. And also, what does that teach your kids? Now you're teaching, if you're as a, an adult in your blended family holding on to a fence, you're teaching your kids that's how to do life. And then we want our kids to go out and have successful relationships. But what have we modeled? We've modeled holding on to bitterness, resentment, and offense. And I think for me, if I'm being transparent and honest, this is probably my biggest struggle with people. Yeah? Yeah, think so? I think this is the biggest thing that, I've had I'm I'm still overcoming I'm still learning I'm reading this great book right now so if you're listening go get it if you're a believer especially um your sister and brother-in-law recommended it and it's called bait the bait of satan the bait of satan and um it's a really 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 interesting read around letting go of offense and probably why this is the topic that is inspired for tonight. Yeah, you've been reading it a lot lately. It's, it's your morning read. It is. It, it rocks my world. It's riveting. And um, it's interesting. So if you struggle with offense or you struggle with being offended or even if you are being told that you're offending people, read this book. It's, it's, it's 
brilliant so far. So anyway, um, but yeah, it definitely, offense can destroy relationships. Well, you know what? I think this is something that is good for children to learn early on um, in elementary school. You know, how to, if you're offended, not to move on. You know, I feel like a lot of parents probably um, teach their kids that if, you know, little Johnny or little Susie's mean to you, well, just don't play with them anymore. Stay away from them on the playground. Mm -hmm. You know, don't walk on that side of the road. Avoid people, right? Yeah. And I think a good lesson for that as a kid and something I, I definitely taught my kids as when they were young is that if someone is mean to you on the playground or mean to people around you, a lot of times it's very circumstantial and not truly what's in their heart. It's what, there's other things going on. So if so, a kid's being mean to you on the playground, don't necessarily avoid them unless they're being like physically mean and want to just hurt you, you know? There's something going on. Try to figure out what's what's the deal with them, you know? And, and not in a prying manner, but in a caring manner. Like, mm. hey, you know, what, you know, what, you, you see what I'm getting at? Like, try to understand what's going on. Try to befriend them. Because a lot of times these little kids have these anger issues coming out. And it's usually about home life. The, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've always taught them in how to just kind of not for better, for lack of a better term, kill them with kindness. Like find out why they're being like this. And a lot of times it's, it's, it's not even you. That's the problem. You know, they're not even being mean towards you. Kids aren't being mean towards other kids mm -hmm. because they don't like them. It's it's usually something else stemming, like you said, from like a home life yeah. type of a thing. And, you know, if I feel like it's a, a lesson that kids can learn at a very young age. You still, I mean, it's funny because as you say that, you model this to this day in your co-parenting relationship. And it's something and advice, we still talk about too. Yeah, but advice you give me. When I'm upset about something or I can't believe this is being said or whatever mm -hmm. it should be, you know, you're like, because you always say kill them with kindness and don't give them reason, like prove them wrong. Let your, That's let funny. your actions we, prove them wrong. My son and I had this, literally this conversation. You have this on conversation our, with everyone. I know. We had this conversation <laughs> on our drive home today I and mean, it wasn't about anything right now, but he's like, hey, what if this person shows up? at a place, mm. you know, he, he's like, this person probably won't even remember or won't even know who I am because I'm older now. I'm riding a different bike now, you know, blah, 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 these things. And I said, well, it doesn't matter whether they know who you are or don't know who you are when you pull up, when they pull up to the track, because mm -hmm. it's, you know, well, anyways, um, I said, just be yourself. Don't act like anything ever happened because what happened that you're worried about never truly involved you, even though it was about you. It was, it wasn't you. You weren't the reason why this, this topic and this, all of this came about. It wasn't about you to begin with. So why do you have to change who you are? Alter? Exactly. And he's like, yeah, you're right. I said, just go on being yourself, mm -hmm. you know, stay status quo, stay true to who you are. And, whether, you know, if they want to then cast judgment on you, again, that's on them. But yeah. if you aren't anyone who other people have said you are, and then yeah. who cares? That's not your problem. Yeah. I know. I, I hang out. I hang on to that advice a lot in our blended family because um, it's no secret that all of the exes like to say things about both of us and spread rumors and lies and gossip and you know, put things out there that are just untrue. And it's hard sometimes for me. You do, you do really well. You don't, you don't get offended. Um, I, I can't get offended if I don't see it. You know what I mean? Like I don't take the time uh, to see it. So it just. Yeah. Well, it's people <laughs> bring it. Well, stick yeah. Stick my head in the sand. No, I just, I just different. don't put my head up to look for it. You know? Yeah. Well, people present it too. And that's. Present it. People present it. Like look what's being said about you. Yeah. I don't, you know, so. Um, but I hang on to that advice because what I do have to believe is that 
regardless of anything else, my life will speak for itself. And it sh- as it should. Yeah. Like, like you that's know, the important thing. and if you guys are worried about, cause this is a, this is something that is very common, very, very common that the kids that bio parents and step parents alike are worried about what the other house is saying. And, you know, is that going to change the children's <laughs> opinions of you? you Most know? likely it's nothing good. So <laughs> stop worrying about it. Well, no, you but it, you worry because you don't want your kids to fall out right. of favor with you. Right. But again, right. what have I always told you on that? Well, you be the difference. Yeah. Just be. Be you. Yeah. And, and the just kids will. The same advice. And like the, the kids, kids will, will figure it. it out eventually. It's yeah. like they are. They're going to see who you are. They're going to yeah. see your consistency. And if it's not a front, if it's not you having to pretend every single time Mm-mm. the kids are home. God, that'd be exhausting. It'd be exhausting. I but if, it, if that's not truly what it is, if yeah. that's not truly who you are. The kids will see it. The kids will see it. Like, and I mean, my parents. Well, and here's the thing is my parents are still together. My parents have been together all my life. And I'm very close to both of my parents. I literally just hung up the phone with my dad five minutes before we pressed record on this podcast. I, my parents are different people than who I thought they were when I was 5 or 10 or 15 or 20 years old. They're not the people I truly believe them to be. Now, are they worse people? No, not by any means. But they're different. They aren't the people. When, when kids are little, and you guys all think back to when you were a little tiny kid, you know, if you had your parents around um, or mom or dad or whoever raised you, your closest person, they could save the world. Anything they told you was gold. It was what what said what was said was is what would go, right? I mean, if your mom they told knew you something, everything. That's it. Although and until you're a teenager, then they know nothing, right? But then it kind of comes back. But now, as an adult, I'm like, no, they were just looking out for me. They wanted the best for me. You know, mm-hmm. did they know everything? No, but they were willing to take the time to find things out for me or give me the best advice or give me their thoughts or their opinions. Now, kids in a blended family are having to deal with that, but two different sides. And with those thoughts and opinions come thoughts and opinions on the other household. Mm -hmm. But as we get older, our kids are going to realize the truth. Maybe some of it was right. Maybe some of it was wrong. But the kids are going to form their own opinions. The kids are going to going to come to light and learn the truth. Yep, and and it's it's I think it's hard because you cannot really control what opinions your kids are going to form, other than just yes, you, being yeah, you. That's it. But they're going to come to their own conclusion, and you have to kind of be okay with that. Trust that you did what you felt was in the best interest of your children and showed up in a way that you're proud of. You're not perfect, but you're doing the best you can with what you have. And I, I hold that true for actually all of all, all, every co-parent that we have <laughs> and, and step like I, every parent in our children's lives. I truly believe everyone's doing the best they can with what they have, with the hand they've been dealt with their childhood experiences at play and forming how they parent. Um, I truly hold that true for all of us across the board for all the, all these kids. And I think you just have to kind of rest in that. And also it is the long game. That a hundred percent. It is not, it is not, it is not when they're 18. It's probably when they're 35 and when they're going to start really understanding life because our children have no life experience under their belts. Not really. I mean, they have more than a normal child in a blended family because they're navigating two homes. They're having to ad- learn to adapt. They're learning so much in two homes. Like doing that kind of life does mature them faster, I believe. But really, they have no grit as far as like real life experience. Hello. Hi. Sorry. <laughs> I was checking our. <laughs> I'm tired. Welcome tonight. to my I wanted, frame. I wanted to make sure I hit record. I did, right? On that one. It is numbers are counting. Numbers are counting. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what is happening? Because I had a really, 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 really long day the other day. Yeah. It was like a thirty eight hour day. <laughs> I'm tired. Um 
So, yeah, I think that kids have to get some life experience under their belt. They have to know what adulting is like, what paying bills are like, what navigating work and family. Like, they have to, I think before kids can appreciate parents, they have to kind of go through a journey themselves beyond living in our homes. So I just invite everyone to hold on. Hold on. I tell myself this right now, especially, like, you just have to hold on. It's the long game. It's not six months. It's like 10 years or 20 more years, you know? So, but holding on to a fence doesn't even give you a shot at a long game. I keep on picturing someone like hanging on to like a tall a wooden, fence? wooden fence. <laughs> You're thinking of just a like fence hanging instead of there, a fence. <laughs> like two hands. Yeah. Well, and I want to talk about being easily offended. <laughs> you know nothing about that. You How can either, you talk my to darling. that? <laughs> I think this is Eric and I get offended all the time. I don't. Okay. Stop offending me. Uh-huh. But you know what I find is that when you're easily offended and how you can check yourself, it's a very anxious way to live because you never know if you're okay or not in a relationship because you're always offended. So then you're always giving away your power. Does this, am I making sense? (laughs) Yeah. You know what I mean? When somebody has the power to offend you, you are finding yourself disempowered. And when you live in a disempowered way in relationships, then it becomes a lot of anxiety that inhibits the relationship and a lot of stress and a lot of like, you know, I I have to ask you 20 times a day something or I have to, I I don't know what that looks like for most people, but it's it's a very anxious way to live in a relationship, and that's that's difficult. Again, how can your relationship mature and grow if you're anxious all the time? It really can't. Anxiety stunts growth. Anxiety keeps you stuck, just like fear, um, just like being offended, and like stress keeps you stuck. You have to kind of break free from all of this to be able to grow and mature And to realize success in your relationships. So, um, I thought it'd be useful to define offense. Did you write it down? (laughs) I did. Let's hear it. Okay. So, what is offended? Because I feel like the word we're going to define is offended. When you feel offended. Um, Sometimes I, I have found, especially in coaching, that we use words and we really don't know what they mean. Like, if I told you, if I asked you to define... I feel like that's, like, a big, 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 big part of our world right now. There's so many words that just get thrown around mm -hmm. that people have no idea what they're saying, and then they become Mm taglines, and people get hung hung up on these words, and, like, at the end of the day, it's like, why are you using the word for this? Like, it has nothing to do with... Did you... um, Fun fact... Uh. The most searched word of 2022, according to Webster Dictionary. Is it Bieber? No. Narcissist. Oh, really? Yeah. So funny. Weird. Not funny, haha. Just interesting. It's a very big word uh, right now. Narcissism, narcissist. Yeah. Interesting, though, that a lot of people don't know what the definition to that is. But that, that's the most looked up word. That's in, what I'm saying. Oh, that's that's they right. They're looking know, up so the look definition it up. for it. Well, it's so a very it hot topic. It's a very hot button hot topic word it's like calling someone i don't know call someone a bad a name psychopath yeah like it's it's what we call our exes yeah, look up. now you guys want everyone you guys want to see it like everyone yeah. it's like what it's the best word that everybody wants to call people but they don't like you're a narcissist it. right he's a narcissist she's a narcissist yeah. so that's like a fun fact look up psychopath like it's really probably like the definition of someone who's so, a psychopath is like not as do you know this for a fact? Yeah, but it's not as like what? It's not as thriller as you would think. <laughs> it's not like the horror movie. It's like a bed that of flowers. Think. Well, look at here. I'll look sun. it up real quick while you go on to the well, next I thing. Defend, uh, yeah, well, I defend. Yeah, well, I defend. Well, I define offended. So I looked up the definition of offended, and it is resentful or annoyed, typically as a result of a perceived insult. So I found it interesting. I mean, resentment, which, or resentful, I figured, yeah, that's pretty spot on. But then I didn't, I never considered entering the word annoyed into like connecting that. Like from Domino's? Like a little annoyed? A little annoyed. Remember the annoyed? No. Avoid the annoyed? A little red guy? No. Anyway, 
So that is a definition of being offended by a perceived insult. And I found that interesting too, because it's what we perceive. And that reminded me that a lot of times we're offended about something that isn't even the truth. Like, why are we offended about things that aren't even true? You know what I'm trying to say? Like, we perceive (laughs) something and then we're going to take it as an insult. But how many, like, how often, even when our kids come home and share what's said at the other house, for instance, we forget the, the the game of telephone. Like, so much gets lost in translation between children and homes and hearsay even when people come up to you and are like can you believe this is what's being said about you because this happens I do have to keep in mind that what is being translated to me isn't even necessarily the actual verbatim what was said but more likely an interpretation and if someone's your friend they're probably interpreting it in a way that paints it in a bad light because that's what they hear is somebody attacking you and so they get you know what I'm have trying ever, to say? Yeah, have you ever had this happen before, though? And, like, by the time it all comes to light, you're like, whoa, I totally took that wrong. I'm sure I have. I'm sure I have. Yeah. So that is a definition of being offended. Because, I, like I said, we use words like peace. I want joy. I want peace. Well, what does that even mean? And people look at me like. You're a psychopath? People look at me like, I don't know the definition of joy. I just want it. Well, how can you want something you don't know? Do you know the definition of psychopath? Okay, read it to us. It's not that good. Oh. Um, Psychopath, a noun. A mentally unstable person. (laughs) I know many psychopaths. Especially (laughs) a person having... You can do it. (laughs) You can do it. What is that word? Oh my gosh! You oh, did not- sorry. No, oh gosh, no. I, I've got <laughs> ads popping up because I'm on. Sure. I'm on Webster Dictionary. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> okay, sorry. Especially a person having an egocentric and antisocial personality, marked by a lack of remorse for one's actions, an absence of empathy for others, and often criminal tendencies. Oh, that's exactly what I thought it would be. It's not that exciting. It's exactly it's, what I thought it would be. Uh, well, sorry, Webster. What did you think it was going to be? What Nothing. were you like, hoping for? When someone calls someone a, a psychopath, movie? like which your daughter calls people psychopaths <laughs> all the time. <laughs> yeah, like th- that's like totally the definition she's looking for. Friday like, the 13th. Like Freddy Krueger, like blood horror, like. Someone that just kills people and rips their eyes out and eats them for <laughs> breakfast like with milk bath? over them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's like, uh, yeah, it's just, it's not as exciting. Yeah. No, it's kind of wah, wah, wah. It is. Yeah. You were hoping for a little movie moment. But back to the point is some sometimes people call thing people things trying to have it be a definition that's totally they don't Not even, even know. like on point of yeah. what it is. And this is so common. I mean, we all do this. This isn't, I mean, we all use words and we couldn't define it if we had to. So I invite you to take out your dictionary and start learning about the things that you really want. If I were your life coach, that's where we would start. You say you want these things. What does that mean? You cannot arrive at a destination if you don't know what that destination is. And you don't know what joy is. You just hear it. But what does that actually mean? Because you have to know that to get it. You have to know you're on the right path anyway. I won't get into that because we're getting off topic. But um, I want to talk about the rest of the time how we do let go of offense. Anything else you can think of about why it's important or the destruction it can cause? I think it's hard in marriages to be offended at each other all the time and treat because then you get into this pattern of your spouse is your enemy. Yeah. Like just, you know and, I mean? well, and just weird things happen, you know, like just, I mean, I want to give circum or, uh, I want to give examples, but it do- I don't think it helps to <laughs> <laughs> like we walk into the podcast studio just a few minutes ago and I'm like, Hey, why all these mics and, wires and stuff what like uh, why are they in here and i'm just like they just threw me off i'm I'm getting ready to set things up and you're like oh sorry i needed room on the shelf for something else 
Like, I'll come take care of him if you need me to. Like, I'll get, I'll take, you know what I mean? Like, you're like, I'll just, I'll take care of him. I'm like, no, I'm just, I don't care. I'm just curious, like, why they're here. They're not in their normal home. It's not a big deal. Like, cool. They can, uh, and if I have a problem with it, I'll move them. I can put them somewhere else. I'm just curious why they're here right now. Mm. I'm not trying to offend you. <laughs> I'm not, mm. I don't care that they're not on that See, other but shelf. Yeah, you're right. Like, something so little so simple. can get turned into. That could have been a total fight. I'm just <laughs> too tired tonight to argue. <laughs> I don't think I argued. <laughs> no, I know. But See, it could have right been. There, but 100% even per, that, no, I'm even being this silly. Right I'm being now silly. Could be. But 100% could have been an argument, you know, and it just could have been a back and forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, easily offended. Those and smallest. not a big deal. And it's mm -hmm. like, wait, I don't, I don't care if I really cared. like. And it's hard. I think it's sad, especially, you know, not so much with our co-parent situations, you know, but I think it's hard with, like, marriage and kids and stepkids if you're living in a state of offense or you have the spirit of offense in you, you can never truly relax into relationship. So how sad is it that even in your marriage, your marriage doesn't feel safe because if you're always offended in your marriage, your marriage is not ever going to feel safe. And if your marriage doesn't feel safe, dot, dot, dot. I mean, what's <laughs> the fruits of that? I don't know. And same with your parent-child relationships if you're, if it, or stepchildren. Like, anybody you're in relationship with, even friendships. You know, if you are constantly offended in your relationship with anyone, you're probably not going to feel safe in it. And mm. what is the fruits of an unsafe relationship? So, pop quiz. Hot shot. Hot shot. Um, what movie is that from? I don't know. If, if you're listening to this right now and you're in this place that you feel unsafe in your relationship mm -hmm. because your spouse or your other partner is easily offended. Or you, you, you're offended. Or you're easily offended. Yeah, because you're the one feeling upset and offended all the time. Does Julie the life coach oh my for step parents, because this is what you do for a living. Well, for bio parents, for adults and blended families. For anyone. Yeah. You are stuck in your life, day-to-day -day life, and you need help. Becoming heard now at gmail.com. Um, okay, so to put you on the spot, mm -hmm. see how good you are at life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you fix this right mm, now? I so can tell you. Can you? Yeah. You're that good? I mean, Becoming good. heard now at gmail.com. Well, it's a journey of transformation through habit change. Okay. A lot of what we do is habit. So I believe even getting offended can become a habit because sometimes being offended is a coping mechanism that you've adapted along the way in your life to protect you, right? You've learned to be offended to protect yourself. So that part of you that's offended is actually doing a good job of making you feel like um, protected. You know, I'm, I'm watching out for me. Um, and so we recognize that and maybe there's something else going on, but there's a, there's a, there's a reason you have to identify why you're being offended. We do that. And then it's, it's realizing that it's a really disempowered place to be. And so that's really hard. <laughs> Meaning that you have no control over your situation or no, you're like if you're that affected, yeah. You know, I mean, we all, uh, being offended is human. We, uh, there's not a human that walks this earth who's never going to be offended and never been offended. It's part of life, you know? But what it is, is if it's, if, so, if it's controlling relationships, it becomes unhealthy when your relationships are suffering because you're offended all the time. You know, that's when it's a problem. And so that is a very disempowered way to live because if you are that affected by everything then you handed your power out to the other person so much so that you're at the mercy of what they say to you does that make sense becoming heard now at gmail.com so yeah, okay, what so we do is mm -hmm, we what create we well i give tools to my clients so that they can take their power back and we call it empowerment Right? How do I take my power back? What do I do to... So steps to do it. 
it's like tools to do it. Here's the tools. Here's the steps. This yeah. is what you do. You follow this playbook that I'm going to put in your hands. Yeah. And if you follow this play by play and you learn how to do this yeah. and over and, time and, and consistency, practice, right? Yeah. It is a practice. Anything that we talk about, anything you do in life is a practice. It's not like you go to your wedding and you stand up there in front of everyone and you say, I love you to your spouse. And that's the only time you ever say it. Hunk a hunk a burn a low. I told you on our wedding day, I love you. How do you not know that? <laughs> How do you right? not know that? Like, uh, why do I have to say it again? I said it once. It's a practice, right? Like, it, so anything that you, any tool, any habit that you want to change or, you know, you don't just brush your teeth once. You have to tell your Some kids. Some people do. You have to tell your kids a thousand times to brush their teeth before it becomes habit. I remember I was told that once by by a teacher and it blew a, my mind. A I'm thousand like, oh. times? It takes how like a thousand it, times. How long does it take to become a professional at something? If you're like, it t- a habit mm. takes a thousand times. I want to be a professional. <laughs> how many, how many hours know. do you need to put into something? I don't have an answer for that. Do really? you? I feel like you're uh, you're always working, like you're always a mastering a craft. I don't yeah. think you ever. The average proven. Oh, you know this. Interesting. Yeah. Average proven hourly rate to become a professional at something is 10,000 hours. Oh, nice. Is that like trade work and stuff like that? Yeah. 10,000 I mean, hours. I th- that's, just, that's just the magic number. I don't know who, who the I scientist know. is that came up with this. What's your source? Um. It's just known being fact. a know-it-all. Because you're a know-it-all, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I have 10,000 hours of knowing it all <laughs> under the belt. Are you a professional? I am a professional know-it-all. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You guys see what I'm married to. A know-it-all. A know-it-all. Um, okay, so let's talk about how we let go of offense. Like, that's the helpful part of this. Okay. Besides working with me, if you want to. Becoming heard now at gmail.com. Yeah. At the time of this recording... Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, free breakthrough session. A free breakthrough session at the time for of this recording. A new potential client. Yep, Kinda reach cool. out. Um, so the first thing you have to understand is that letting go of anything, whether it's fear, offense, um, resentment, bitterness, you have to understand that letting go is a choice. You do have that choice. You are not a Very few people are actually victims in this world. And I think that sometimes we go at things from a victimhood mentality and it really dishonors true victims in the world. Like they're gun to head, you know, you were robbed at gunpoint, you're a victim. You're not really a victim in your marriage unless there's abuse. Like then maybe, but then, you know what I mean? Like I don't want to get into all that, but Letting go is a choice, and you have that choice. You have the power to do so. And so I think believing that possibility for yourself, believing that it is a choice, believing that you have the power to let go is a mindset shift. Because sometimes, like I said, we get into victimhood mentality, and anytime you're a victim, you're powerless. So it's really work around switching your your belief system that you can do this, that you have a choice, that you have the power. And then you tell yourself this sometimes daily. Sometimes people call this an affirmation. Sometimes you have to self-talk and change your mindset and have a mantra around, I have a choice, I have the power, I can do this. And so letting go though, other thing to know about it is it's a practice. You don't just let go once and you're done, right? You have to practice letting go over and over and over again a thousand times before it's habit. Is that what Elsa did? What? Elsa? Yes, let go. Let it go. Yeah, a thousand times. But so it's a daily practice, right? It is is making the choice and making the decision every day, sometimes every moment, sometimes before you read a text or an email or after or during, you're telling yourself that I'm letting offense go for the betterment of the relationship so that I can be in a successful co-parenting relationship. So my husband can be my teammate and not my enemy. Like I am choosing to not be offended, especially over things that 
don't really we get i mean like eric you gave that example microphones. the stupidest I'm staring at the microphones <laughs> but it's like <laughs> the, the littlest cords. thing is it going to ruin our night it could for it sure could. but it's like that mindset of like that's the practice of just letting it go and being intentionally changing your mindset around that Does well that here it is sense? in in being anything and becoming a professional of anything <laughs> you have to practice 10,000 hours you think I'm right? Is that what you said? That's what I said. Yeah, what is it? You have to practice good behaviors though. You have to get oh. rid of you have to get rid of the bad habits and you have to practice doing things the right way. And to become a know it all. <laughs> like you have you. to know things. Like, would you read this, please? Would you read that for I me? I believed you. did would I you ever please say read that I didn't to the believe audience? you? Oh my gosh. Oh, you know I'm a know it all, but not everyone else knows <sighs> I'm a know it all. The Google says the question is, what does it take to become an expert or a master performer in a given field? <laughs> master performer. <laughs> giggity, giggity, yeah. <laughs> 10,000 hours of practice. It's a common rule of thumb popularized by Malcolm Gladwell in his bestseller, Outliers, The Story of Success. 10,000 hours. It's catchy, easy to remember, and more or less completely false <laughs> <laughs> you were supposed to read that far down no but it honestly it has been as funny as that is that has been the like the rule of thumb like oh. it, it's been a proven thing over until now. years and generations and now it's false. well his whole thing was like trying to debunk that like yeah of course that there's of course there's other circumstances and scenarios i mean there's people that are just absolutely gifted at things like just geniuses but the rest of us who aren't geniuses but if you're like i'm not that good at basketball but i really want to get good at basketball well you play basketball for ten thousand hours going from being terrible at basketball by about ten thousand hours you're gonna probably be really 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 good at basketball giggity giggity (laughs) goo if anyone tries that let me know let me know how it goes. <laughs> how does basketball working out? Um, and so also part of letting it go, if you're a believer, is giving it to God. Like, I think it's arbitrary to say let it go. That's kind of a hard concept for people. Um, and so I love when you can attach it to faith because something bigger than yourself, it, it matters. And so letting it go and giving it to God There's peace in that. There's peace that you don't have to judge others or you don't have to, you don't have to carry judgment of others. There's peace in that you don't have to be the one to, um, like, what's the word I'm trying to think about? Um, you don't have to like, mm, I I can't think of the word camera on close up of you (sighs) while you think of it. Yeah, like you don't have to rectify the situation. You don't have to bring down punishment, but there's a word for it and it's just escaping me. But, you know, it's not ours to make right. It's God. You know, God deals with sin. That's not our job. So I think giving it to God is a really healthy practice and actually elicits peace. Um, This inner calm where it's just not affecting you anymore. You're just kind of like, you're not giving it any creed. I'm rubber, you're glue. Whatever you says bounces off me and sticks back on you. Dang it. I know that was like playground talk. I know. You know that how much tough. I have. Do you have any idea how much I have sticking on me? <laughs> I can't. There was so much bouncing of the rubber. Okay. Um, And I think the second thing to keep in mind is, you know, when you're being offended by somebody because, you know, there's a p- perceived insult coming at you, whether it's true or not, really not the point. But I think it's important to keep in mind that it what's being, like the person speaking it, it says way more about them than it does you. Whether it's true or not, not even, doesn't even matter. If somebody's willing to make TikTok videos about you or post on social media about you or tell the kids about you or in the community about you or Who whatever. Who the hell are you, my A&E biographer? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. But it, but really, it reveals a lot about themselves. And I wrote down something that 
and I want you to tell me if you agree with this or not, because it was a thought that came to me as I was writing all this out, and it says, while someone else may be attempting to tap into your insecurity by putting something out there, they're really exposing their own. Tap, tap, tap. Do you agree? Like, tap, what, tap do you, what do you think tap, about tap, that? Tap, Okay. No, I, go yeah. To, you need to go night night. <laughs> <laughs> go to your home. Awesome. Are you too good for your home? But yeah, like someone is trying to call you out and really they're exposing themselves. That's how I feel about that. Yeah. And I think that speaks for themselves. I'm like, I'm trying to give an analogy of what it is, but I think it's just like your rubber, I'm glue. Or your glue, <laughs> I'm rubber. Okay. Maybe we stopped talking Rubbery about rubbers. Glue. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Um, and I think if you can also like start having that mindset, it calms you down a lot and it doesn't sting as much. Would you do me a favor? No. Would you go on your profile right now and change your headline to say, I'm rubber, you're glue. (laughs) (laughs) Would you please? You want me to? (laughs) That would be so funny. Okay. Oh my God. Um, okay. The third thing to keep in mind. Okay. The, the. When okay, stop. He's gonna make sure. Oh, yeah. All right, everyone. <laughs> um, we're calm not making down. nothing. Um, so when we're trying to let go of a fence, also understand that when you're giving in to a fence, you're giving in to something that is dark and evil. Because a fence is divisive and God is not divisive. So the spirit of offense really is Satan's work. And should be seen as such. And I read this really great. It was like a meme, but I know it's, 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 it said a lot. And I just love keeping this in mind that we fight demons, not people. Yeah. And I think that's a really, really like write that down and put it on your phone or something. Well, this goes right back to, that's a spiritual way of what I was trying to explain. And like what about kids when they're little kids, when they're little kids, it's not the per- it's not the little kid. It's their circumstance it's or the what circumstances. they've been what's, what's been bred into them yeah. and influenced and, and nurtured. Usually, into yeah, them. usually, and that's yeah. why the kid is the way they are. If you give this kid a little bit of love and some candy and happiness, like well, they're stoked on life. They don't care, right. you know. If if little Johnny, they hate little Johnny, and they come to school. And little Johnny, the next day, yeah. and little Johnny has you know just nothing but nice stuff for him and just. Kills him with kindness, if you will. Yeah. Little Johnny's just super sweet to him and has his favorite little snack for him. And I'm not trying to say buy their love, but you show a kid happiness, yeah, and joy and love, and all of a sudden, like everything about that kid changes, right? And that is a really good lesson adults need to learn. And in, in we're something... so hardened by this time well, in life, though, we're so conditioned, yeah, to knowing other way because of our circumstances, yeah. Well, right, and hate breeds more hate, right? And resentment breeds more resentment, and offense breeds more offense. Like, if that is where, because there's a saying that wherever your attention goes, your energy flows. So if your attention's on offense, then your energy's, like, you are going to respond, behave, react out of offense, and return offense back to the offender. And now you're just part of the problem because you're spreading the thing that's bugging you or hate, or anger, right? Anger breeds more anger. So if you're angry at someone, and they're angry at you, and you're going to go into a conversation angry at each other, what's the fruits of that? No one's ever been like, thank you for being angry at me. I'm changing. Thank you. I appreciate your anger. Like, that doesn't happen. And so you're Imagine right. if it did, though. That, you, would, like, that would, would be that- your wet dream come true. But I think you're right. Like, kids... What you're to your point, love changes things. And if we could do that in marriage, and even I know like saying love and co parenting, but listen, I will always say you need a success. And I haven't been a great model at it. It's been really hard for me. I'm not a perfect human and I'm still learning and growing. But what I do know is that if you can let love in, like the first Corinthians love of patient kind like the fruits of love not the feeling of love right i'm not talking about a feeling i'm talking about i'm talking Uh. about 
like the, pr- the 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 love is a choice the verb of love yeah. if you can lead like that that changes things it disarms people and so if you can lead with love and kind of get your mind wrapped around that you have to first know what love is though right back to the defining the words before you use that like we, we use these words we have no idea what they mean we want these things we have no idea what that is Love is one of those things. You have to really understand love before you can lead with it. But if you can lead with it, to Eric's point, it changes everything. The ripple effect is huge. You know what just hit me? (laughs) Nothing. My friend owns a fence building company. (laughs) Does that make him an offender? Okay. Deep breath around that. Um, I mean, wrap your mind around that. Okay. So part of letting go of offense is you have to have a healthy practice of forgiveness. Now, I thought, I think, I think being offended, I think this is something I struggle with because for me, not for Eric's very different than me. (laughs) A lot of ways. It's not all about me, hon. But listen, like, I think why I struggle with offense so much is because my greatest struggle in life is forgiveness. It is absolutely the hardest thing. Can I get an amen if you're listening? Forgiveness is the hardest thing. And it's the hardest thing because I believe for me that in order to forgive, I cannot do it on my own. Forgiveness is not something I can do on my own. I have to partner with God. I have, it's like a divine it's divine intervention. It is a partnership with God. It is something that I'm dependent on God to lead me through to get to. So it's not just uh, forgiveness doesn't come easy. It's not natural. It's not something I feel like I can do without God. So I think that's why offense is also like the two go hand in hand. If you can't forgive, you will be offended. Like letting go of offense, there isn't a thing, there's a part of it that requires like truly letting go forgiveness. And listen, forgiveness is a big thing for a lot of people, but forgiveness is f- to free yourself. Forgiveness is not to excuse bad behavior, right? And I know this is like such a woohoo saying or we roll our eyes, but like forgiveness is a gift you give to yourself, which I roll my eyes too, but it's true. You know, we're not forgiving to let someone off the hook or to absolve, like it does, forgiveness doesn't absolve the past and doesn't make you forget what happened. Forgiveness just detaches you from being controlled by the offense. So if you want to become unbothered, which is one of my favorite words, or you want to become detached from offense, you have to have a healthy practice of forgiveness. And that's extremely difficult, which is why I think this is so hard for a lot of people. You don't really seem to struggle like I do with this. No, but all. I'm not perfect. I'm just a know it all. <laughs> oh my gosh. I can't, you guys. I can't. <laughs> Can I apologize and confess about something? <laughs> that <laughs> that was kind of funny earlier because we're sitting at a tonight's our um our Christmas parade. Our annual Christmas parade. Or do they call it a holiday parade or is it actually a Christmas parade here? I don't know. Okay. Well for sakes of who we are, it was a Christmas parade, our annual Christmas parade. And I show up to the Christmas parade and we're sitting, I mean, elbow to elbow, shoulder to shoulder with hundreds of people, thousands of people, right, in our city. And like out of all, out of the blue, Julie goes, I was setting up our stuff on YouTube and someone watched on our YouTube like people, <laughs> girls in like what painted bikinis or something like that i was like what is it what is this like what i'm like what like first of all like i wouldn't watch that second of all no one's been around the computer or um i guess it could be on my phone though i was thinking about it i was like oh it could be on my phone but no one's had my phone no one's had access to my phone i know i didn't watch this i'm like what is like what and you're like so i just cleared it i deleted it you're like, yeah, but it's been in the tw- last 12 hours. And I'm like, what? This is weird. I'm like, no. So I basically called you a liar, but I didn't. But you said this in like front of like, there were like 30 people around us, and I could watch all the eyes like looking down at me like this perv. <laughs> it 
It was adults. It no, wasn't Yeah, perverted. but it was still super awkward. Like, I'm getting called out. I got my company name all over my back and stuff oh, here. Oh, I'm sorry. I did like, not even. Ah, here we go. Oh, I didn't. I was I was just more so of a conversation. So then like, I'm like, this is all I'm thinking about the rest of the night. I'm like, this is awkward. This is weird. I know I didn't watch it. I know no one's had my phone. Like, no, one, my laptop was at home. My computer was at mm-hmm. home. No one's been around. So I go and look at this. I'm like, what the heck? Like, what is this? So first of all, it wasn't in the last 12 hours. It was the videos watched within the last 12 hours. Oh, I, I don't watch YouTube, so I don't really know. Second of all, it was Aussie Man Reviews. So it's like this funny guy who like reviews. He's an Aussie guy, and he has these crazy accents, and he reviews crazy things, which I do watch Aussie Man Reviews every so often if there's a funny, like looks like there's going to be a funny one. However, I did not watch this one. How did this get played? I'm, like, trying to figure out how this got played. And then I start thinking back. Like, have I watched YouTube? Totally watched YouTube this morning. On our way to go riding this morning, my son and I did not go to church. So the days that we don't go to church, we watch church service on YouTube. Or listen because you're driving. Or listen. He was driving, so I was watching. Oh, okay. That's how I watched it because he was driving. Um, That's how you saw color schemes. But yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're driving, we're watching this, and it lasts almost till we get to the track, but it was like right at the end of the message, so it didn't matter. And as we're pulling up to the track, I had to jump out, get the gate. It's a private track that we're riding. Get the gate, and it's a, like in kind of a sketchy area of service out in the middle of nowhere. So my phone was in the cup holder. I left it on, went out, got the gate kept going listening and it was kind of in and out of service and I just left my phone on so what happened and I'm assuming this is what happened and how it happened oh. I left my phone on it recommended something next and the next thing that it came up was it? no nope it played like a dirt bike video and it was like a long like oh. something on like Ricky Carmichael and then that played after that oh. I'm assuming I just have autoplay on oh. I'm assuming that played afterwards because oh. I have watched Aussie Man reviews like he's a funny dude and then before we like we got there, ate breakfast, and then went up the hill. And I grabbed my phone out of the car, out of the truck, and realized my phone was still on. And all I did is just flipped off my phone and put it in my pocket and took off right and ran. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure that's how that happened. It's so funny. So, so thanks to church, I got called out in middle of a Christmas parade for being a total perv. You're not. A, oh my god! <laughs> but that's how it, it wasn't felt. perverted. It, felt. it was like it, you were right though. It was like it, it was like paint on. Yes. Or stickered I was on like, or I don't something. Say, like, I'm trying to work on our YouTube but channel. But the picture, the thumbnail is like Aussie Man Review's face and then like girls standing there or a lady standing there with like black painted or sticker. Pinstriped. Pinstriped. Like, like on bikini. her naked body. But yes. no, but it was like, I, I mean, I could give you the title I, of it, but it was something like something bikini failures or something like oh, that. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, it was. Thank you, church. Thank you, church. <laughs> For that it was hilarious but i just had i'm like all right this is how it worked out because i'm like what who who what when where and it's why very, like how odd. did this work out yeah yeah okay anyway. so um i want to go back to i just want to put this is just, no hang on this has got to turn into a psa ladies <laughs> gentlemen if you think something's going on with your husband or your wife and they're watching or doing things they shouldn't be you don't know for a fact. Okay. <laughs> don't call them out in a Christmas parade. Oh, I didn't even have, know it was that have big a converse- of a deal. No, no, no. But I, I, it, I thought we were just talking. Like I was, I, I was just talking Diane, about. Diane was right next to us, oh. like one of our great friends from. Well, church, clearly, like, like it wasn't. I wasn't no, mad. It was, but I it was, was just kind my, of like my point to this I'm though. Just <laughs> my on point our YouTube to channel. I'm my like, point what is this? to this though is is like if you think you know something but you don't truly know. It's funny how a lot of times things can look one way. It's same thing too. If I would have got on our channel and I'm like, see like weird sketchy things about like half naked dudes doing things, I'd be like, what? I, I know this isn't who you are, but I'm like, yeah, you would I'd no. Add. But the difference is, you would do this in front of people because you've called me out for <laughs> things in front of people that's super embarrassing. Look at her get offended, you guys. No, I'm just. Saying I just needed to give a real life example. The hypocrisy of it. <laughs> yeah, all of it. Because you would make a joke, like you would oh, call me out funny. and make it a joke, and that's okay because w- you're hiding behind humor. But you would call hiding? me out in front of humor's people. in. Like I'm plain just, sight. It's what it is. Anyway, okay. 
Back on topic, though. Of being offended. I'm just speaking Isn't, What's truth. the topic? I'm not offended. What's I'm the topic? Letting go of offense. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Do you got that? Thank you. Do you know what the topic is? Letting what's the go topic? Of your favorite subject. Let's go. Um. So <laughs> Was that you? <laughs> I don't know. So... I think another thing to keep in mind when we're doing all this mindset work around letting go of offense is realizing that even if you see someone as your enemy, right, even if you see someone as against you, they are still a human and they are still loved by God, right? Like in our, in our faith where everybody's a child of God and everyone has value and everyone, I, I don't believe anyone is 100% evil, and Except so for the psychopaths. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but even psychopaths, right? Like God the, like in some like we are taught that God loves all his children and everyone is a child of God. Right. Like that's it. And so if you can see past the offense, right? If you can see past the insult or the lie or the gossip or whatever it is, and see that there's a human, a child of God, that's on the other side of that, that's real, and that maybe they're hurt, maybe they have misinterpreted things, like their offense is coming, they, their, their behavior or actions probably coming from a place of insecurity or hurt. And you can kind of find compassion there and see them as a child of God, and you don't have to make them evil because, again, we fight demons, not people. But and here's I, something I want to add to that because a lot of times, and we're going to go back to the extreme of psychopaths, sometimes psychopaths do terrible things, unhumanly things, things that we're not called to do as people. And just because we see them as a child of God and we can have compassion that they're a child of God, doesn't mean that we have to kill them with kindness. That means that we can realize and recognize who they are, what they've done, and how they are, and we can distance ourselves from them. But doesn't mean that you hold hate or anger or anything like that towards them. Does that make yeah. sense? Doesn't mean just because your neighbor is a child of God that you like have to hug and love your neighbor. Love thy neighbor. By respecting them and giving them, go to, go understand what love <laughs> is. That's like it, right? I you, think that and that's another you have thing to go learn. The definition about. of love is probably not what we think it is. Yeah, yeah. So I think before we can lead with love, we have to really understand what that even means. So, um, I think also if you can recognize offense is an opportunity, and people might be like, "Whoa, that's weird," but really, like I think you. When you're offended, it's a really great test of character, and I think it's a really great opportunity to grow. You know, we grow in the trenches. We celebrate on the mountaintops, and so if you're in a trench moment with um, another person, when you're in a struggle, when you're offended, when you're hurt, you know, I, I believe God's always refining our character, and God, what I've been learning, and I'm doing a Bible study right now, we're finishing it up called um, Experiencing God. I don't know if any of you guys have heard of it. It's a great study. And one of the things we learn in that study is that um, my mind just went blank. <laughs> I don't know what we learned in that study. Experiencing Are you kidding God. me? I know it was really good and I You were going it. on about this whole thing and then you're just like, I, know. I don't know what I learned. I don't know. But... <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Are you kidding me I right don't. now? I don't. It's like, just my mind just totally, it was so good too. Hopefully it comes back. Oh, an opportunity to grow. Oh, that, okay. I do know. Wow, I'm remembering. Boo. I, I remember now. I remember. I'm getting old. Leave me alone. By the minute. I'm like an old person. So here's the deal. Like sometimes we feel like we're in a waiting period, right? Sometimes we feel like marriage is just really hard or our relationship with our child's really hard and we don't see the light. We don't have, or maybe we're in a season of life where we feel like we don't have purpose. I don't, I don't feel like I have purpose. I'm just kind of, it's groundhog day every day. And what we're learning in the study is that, well, God's not going to give you purpose until you're prepared. He's not going to give you purpose and then have you fail at it. 
So before you can take on what he has for you, he's got to refine your character. He's got to mature you. He's got to grow you up in, in a sense so that you can handle what's ahead. So you can carry forth out, like carry out his purpose and he be glorified and there be success. So I think that's a great lesson. Like don't hide from conflict or hard times. Don't put your head in the sand. Don't get so distraught over it. Really a reframe that's useful is this is an opportunity to grow. This is a test of my character. How am I going to handle this? And I think you'll be really proud of yourself if you have some healthy practices in place around being offended. Because like I said earlier, being offended is human. You're going to be offended again. So how are you going to handle it? Who do you want to be as a person who offense is coming at them? And I think that's a really, really, like seeing it as an opportunity instead of like, you know what I'm trying to seeing say? Seeing the fence coming at someone. Oh my gosh. That's all I keep picturing. Mm-hmm. It makes sense though. It makes sense. It does. Okay, last thing I want to say. Well. That's it. I think and, so. Oh. oh no, we're not done. But, you know, it's good to check in and ask yourself, like, what are the fruits of my offense? If I hold on to this offense, what are the fruits going to be from it? Like, I think that's a good, a good check in point with yourself. And then also you might ask yourself, if I forgive, if I forgive and let go, what is the fruit of that? And I think if you can start answering, like giving yourself space to ask both questions that you will self-guide and you will be able to pull yourself out of offense because sometimes we just are illogical when it comes to feelings. We feel offended and feelings are not logical whatsoever and feelings aren't right or wrong. My mom always told me this, right? Feelings aren't right or wrong. They're just feelings. And so we have to kind of like compartmentalize a little bit and push our feelings maybe to the side and deal with them and get logical for a minute and just really question ourselves about this offense. And I think that if you can start doing that, it'll help pull you out of it a little faster and make you want to not hold on to it. There is, I mean, can you think of fruits of offense? Yeah, everything. Like, like there are no fruits. No, of I mean, offense. like, oh, I'm like, I'm thinking opposite. I'm like, it does everything terrible. Yeah, the um, fruit is destruction, right? Yeah, or no, there's divide. nothing good that comes of it. Mm-hmm. I don't like fruit, so here we are. <laughs> so I was, th- I was thinking it like a negative like fruit, fruit. Do you? I do, which is weird, but what I don't. What fruit do you like? I like bananas. I like <laughs> I'm straw- sure you I like do. strawberries and raspberries. I like raspberries. I like kiwis. Yeah, that's true. I'll eat some pineapple. Not pineapple. I can't eat pineapple. You're allergic. It's my mouth itchy. I like cantaloupe. Bitty bitty bop. Do you like ma- um? What's the green one? Mango. No, mango's <laughs> orange. <laughs> Who's the like, old no, one? I was now. thinking. I thought that's what you're starting to say. Honeydew. Mm, not a huge fan of honeydew. Mm, interesting. It's Fruits. whatever. But I would eat honeydew. If I was stuck on an island, all it had was honeydew. I'd eat what if the all it had was dew. pineapple? I'd be screwed. Yeah. I like I like pan- I like the taste of like pineapple candy and like. Does that make you? Does that bother you? The no, taste? pineapple candy. No. <laughs> There's no, no real, real pineapple, pineapple in it. it. And that's um, the difference. Like I could eat canned pineapple. Sure. That's oh. not f- like it's not real. Oh. But I, I don't love it. Mm. Anyway, ask okay. yourself what is the fruit of what you're holding on to or what is the fruit of what you're going to let go of. And, and I just knew you were going to say that. I'm going to know it all. We fight demons, not people. Yeah, and if if you are holding on to something and you can't find the fruit in it, get rid of it. Let it go. Yeah, pivot. Let Do something go. else, right? You have to move for the show to go. Okay. Thanks, guys, for joining us. He needs to go to bed. I'm going to put you to bed. Let it go and subscribe to all of our social medias. Thank you guys for being here with (laughs) us. Oh, my gosh. What is happening? This is a really weird one. (laughs) (laughs) Bye. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. (laughs)